What's up everybody, this is Dr. Tosin and welcome back to my channel and in this video it's going to be another video on the coronavirus but this time I'll be talking about the COVID-19 antibody test. Now recently um, the antibody test has been rolled out across the NHS Trust for healthcare workers to get tested. Um, it's been free of charge to us but I do know that um, some private companies like Roche and Abbott are charging for it. I think they're charging anything from 50 to 100 pounds, I'm not too sure but that was the quote. Anyway, so I got the chance to get the antibody test done and um, two days ago uh, at work in the middle of my shift I get a phone call, um, random withheld number and um, normally you know withheld numbers you don't pick them they're like okay let's pick this one and who's calling me in the middle of the day and lo and behold it's from the labs and they tell you oh it's this Dr. Taiwo blah 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 they confirm your date of birth just to make sure you're speaking to the right person and they go your antibody test was positive um, I'm like, yeah, so what next? They're like, yeah, we just let you know that test is positive. I ask if I get a text. They say, no, you don't get a text. Um, I tried to inquire what exactly it meant and I didn't get any more information anyway. So that was the end of the phone call. And although my test was positive, a large majority of members of staff have actually had negative results. So everybody's a bit like, hmm, so what does it really mean? So I got thinking, how does that affect me? How does that affect my family members? Have I had a recent infection? Was I infected a long time ago? Was I exposed? Am I immune? Good questions. Now, before we go on, I think we best give some basics. What is an antibody? What's this antibody? Basically, antibodies are proteins that your body makes in response to foreign bodies. In this case, antigens. Antigens uh unique molecules on the body of viruses or could be other organisms but viruses for this discussion where it binds and form the form unique molecules that can fight off um, the virus itself so your body creates an antibody in response to the antigen and it uses the antibody to fight off future infections it could be a strong response immune response or basic response or a weak response sometimes antibodies confer long-term immunity which is what i suspect we are trying to determine um, further research and inquiry from other sources names we've held i find i think there's an ongoing large uk-based research called react where they are kind of testing people randomly to find out if you can be given long-term immunity from the coronavirus Anti going back to antibodies, I kind of digressed a bit. So those are what antibodies. Now for anti for the sake of antibodies, there are two types of antibodies. Basic ones are the IgG and the IgM. IgM tells you if you've got a recent exposure to an infection and the IgG kind of tells you that you were exposed a while back. Uh, could be anything from two to three months or even longer. And that's the, the, the higher the IgG levels, the um, more we can determine if you are building some form of immunity to an infection, in this case, the coronavirus. So how it works is that your body produces um, these antibodies so that in the future, if per chance you get exposed to the virus or an infection, you can produce the antibodies that are unique to that particular virus to help you destroy the virus, kill the virus, quarantine the virus, whatever response your body mounts to it. And that's how we tend to want to build long-term immunity. So this all sounds very good, at least that's what I thought. Uh, but I did not know whether I had been exposed and I had IgG antibodies or IgM antibodies, which is what I was kind of disappointed about. Because if I would found out if I had IgM antibodies, it would tell me that I'd been exposed in the recent period, maybe in the last week or so which means that I could be a potential carrier and I could be spreading out to people, my family, other staff members. But if I had had it um, a longer period and had IgG antibodies, for instance, it could mean that I'd, I'd been exposed a while back and I developed maybe some form of immunity, we don't really know, but at least I'd, I'd been able to mount an immune response to this infection. 
So in response to this, what I did was the next day at work, I went down and hunted down the COVID squad. We've got the COVID-19 squad and went to their office to have a chat with one of the gentlemen. Um, it was an intriguing chat. Have a listen. I'm not sure if we sent a text. No, definitely um, not a text. A phone call, but not a text. Okay. So it's uh, antibodies detected. Yes. And it's the IgG. So at the moment, we're only doing IgG. We don't have IgM. Okay, so we're only doing IgGs. Yeah which is a bit long term okay so okay so that's at least that gives me more more context because it means i'm looking at something more at least two to three months infection which kind of fits with the pattern i was thinking okay when when did you have your symptoms now i didn't have uh, when i had when not looking back at during the main symptom period when a lot of people had symptoms i didn't have symptoms okay. when i now tracks what looked like symptoms this was first week in march there was no lockdown then. No, no. There was no lockdown then. Because what happened was that I did a set of nights. I finished work here, not finished a set of nights. Did some strenuous activity on Friday morning. Tried to lay slabs at the back of my house. Uh, obviously, that was quite... It was heavy work, to be honest with you. Carrying the slabs and putting it down. And I was knocked down Saturday, Sunday morning. Fever, weakness, body pains. No cough. No loss of taste or anything, but just fever. I was like, I was my temperature was thirty seven nine ish because I've got a thermometer at home. Body pains and um, yeah, and just general weakness, Malay. Yeah. But just Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But by Tuesday, I was kind of back. I was back on my feet. Okay. Luckily, I had that whole week off. Yeah. So I wasn't back in hospital or anything. So that's what that's what's going through my mind. Like, okay, okay. that's the only time I felt that, and I I thought, oh, you are getting the flu. Because at yeah. that time it was, it, it was when we, when that happened, I think it was a period where they had just started talking about the GPs, doctors returning from France or is it Italy where they went on the skiing holiday? It was that period? Okay. So begs the question: maybe we already had COVID around oh, no. before I, then. I think we did because there was um, what we've seen is um, I think yours is one of the first of maybe one of, only the few that you said you've had symptoms in march yeah and it shows that you have antibodies uh most of the other ones that we've seen so far is from like april onwards when we started testing so yeah. we have uh, a record of whether they're positive or not yeah and, uh, we have so those are the only ones we can see uh, antibodies detected but okay. any ones from march like even before march sometimes um, like same like really bad symptoms yeah okay but no antibodies were detected interesting so we were thinking it's because of the the short termness of the antibodies but again I don't know it's it's a bit difficult to say at this moment yeah um, Cause another thing is uh, another obviously next theory I had was maybe I was just exposed to the normal people at work probably during that same high yeah. cause it was a high concentration period that a lot of the doctors kind of went down rapidly yes yeah. so it might be that as well i don't know but anyways yeah. at least i've got some context thank you very yeah. much you're welcome all right then have thank a great you. day door closed or open uh, so the next question was how accurate are, th are these tests i mean i remember roche diagnostics i think put out there that their test was 99.7 percent accurate and abbott labs did the same thing in the uk now what this means is that um they, they've got a high specificity and a high sensitivity now the sensitivity of the test is the ability of that test to detect the antibody in the blood if it actually exists so the higher the sensitivity the less the false negative results we get now the specificity of a test is the ability of the test to show that the antibody is truly not present in the serum or blood hence reducing the number of false positives. So the better the specificity, the lesser the false positive results that you get. And in this case, that helps the test to be uh, more accurate. And Roche and Abbott Labs in the UK seem to claim that their tests are quite um, accurate. So going forward with this, I found out that it's all part of, it may be part of a big research project going on to help determine and see the level of transmission in the public the true level 
uh, it could be that the figures we are getting from the only testing patients coming in might not be true figures we don't really so what know. does this mean for the average individual um if you are able to get the test for the cost the, the cost that they are charging anything from 40 to 150 pounds um does it mean that you're able to get back to work go back to the community because technically the logic was that if you test positive and you've got things like igg there might be a potential that you may be immune and you are less likely to be um, an asymptomatic carrier passing it on to other people but however we still can't tell 100 percent because we're still not sure research is still going on uh, on the flip side, um, if you test negative, what does that mean? Does that mean you keep staying at home? Do you keep shielding? Um, we don't know. So for now, what I keep doing is you keep maintaining the social distancing rules. We use face masks when we go out and at work and uh, just try and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Like I keep maintaining that your immune system is like the final line of defense. Try and boost your immune system like you like you can do. I mean, I, like I always said, maintain a good sleep routine. Sleep pattern is very good exercise deep breathing exercises as well those are all things that you can help to use to boost your immune system now how does this all affect the easing of the lockdown rules again everything is still uncertain we're still not sure can this test help us get key workers back to work people more in the grocery store the frontline workers elderly people will it protect them if they get the test logically we were so, we were thinking i am thinking it would but i can't really be 100 percent sure and with lockdown rules going down, we are seeing a resurgence of diseases in places like, well, America, some states in America are reporting peaks in cases, places like Florida and other places as well. And even in Germany, there seems to be another peak happening there or resurgence of disease, I should say. Will that happen here? We can't tell in the UK. Back home in Nigeria, cases are still peaking as well. So a lot of this is still uncertain i think my take is we still have to continue maintaining social distancing it may still be too early to ease lockdown completely until we, are, we get some level of certainty on how these antibody tests work uh, i am glad though that the, the imperial college are doing a research called the react trial where they've given randomly ten thousand people home testing kits to help determine the efficacy of the antibody test there is a plan from them to roll out a hundred thousand kits randomly to people as the second phase of the testing hope that happens very soon and um, yeah stay tuned for more let's see what happens